student of law or for that matter any professional always intends and wants to know as to whether the new fad i can say that because during our times in 1990 it was never as such that internship was an important facet to the contrary if a student used to go to a lawyer's office during his and more so at that time even the five year courses were not there that if a lawyer a student used to go to a lawyer's office to learn the nuances of law they said that law is such subject you can any time once you jump into the law you you would be able to put through but as we see now a lot of organizations have as such taken into an internship placements itself a lot of people do connect even to us that we want to do internship the bar council places a lot of emphasis on internship but does internship as such gives you a value added benefits while you jump into the profession maybe as a lawyer maybe into the corporate law or like we say into the teaching teaching itself like what we have today is the resource person uh i'm aruna l and uh, mr anish day who's otherwise also a chartered accountant who are also teaching in the cmr university in the legal studies and uh, uh, ma'am aruna being in the coordination of the inter- internship cells and placement cells coupled with anish day who has his vast repertoire knowledge on financial aspects also during the course when we take up the session further we would also ask him that since he is having a i can say two feathers in the same cap the professional degree of law coupled with chartered accountancy what made him attract towards the teaching and that to not towards the profession of law or as well as chartered accountancy and more so leaving chartered accountancy and jumping into the long train where the there are a lot of bogies into the of the legal profession with us i can say of the charter the competency because number of students passing out law is many folds times more than what we have in the charter the competency and was it more the merrier or survival of the fittest is out here easy in the darwin's theory would be the i will say while they take the session forward apprise us that what extra edge we have as they say that these internships do they make the same subtle difference what we say that the difference between an ordinary person and an extraordinary person is that little extra effort is that internship that extra edge that extra benefit or it helps you to polish the ball in the right direction as they say in the cricket even if there is one pop, one side polished and the other side rubbed it gives the swings in the different perspectives and what we call a new concept like a reverse swing does it give a reverse swing or it helps you to do better because the reverse swing also helps the bowler to perform better all these different subtle ideas in a bird eye view manner we would ask the two keynote speakers to take things forward first i would request ma'am aruna to give the facet of explaining the internship and since this topic itself contemplates two particular parts internship and placements and mr anish would be taking things forward in the placements and what they say the internship and placements when it becomes the true correct recipe for the best pudding to come forward these are the new aspects which we are expecting in this uh one hour session of us to understand the entire nuances or to your honor ma'am and we are enamored by the fact that both of you have agreed to share their knowledge what they share with the students but with the public at large on the social media of youtube as well as on this platform over to you ma'am thank you so much vikas ji namaste to one and all it's of course a pleasure to be in this platform where uh, stalwarts have already spoken and with regard to career options we have already heard uh two great people professor uh, dr venkat rao and our dean sir professor t r subramanya sir who have already given you an overview of the career options so today me uh, and anish we are going to be speaking about how internship is going to help you steer your career towards a good placement and uh, just to add on to what uh, vikas sir just said uh, anish has been our student so he's been my student and he's the first rank holder at llm and he is now my colleague so it gives me immense pleasure to be sharing this platform with him 
So uh, to start with, um, again, like Vikas sir said, uh, during our times, we did not have this concept of uh, uh, internship. Uh, nevertheless, the students now have taken it very positive and that is where both of us are going to focus today. Uh, do feel free to ask questions and we'll keep it as lively as possible. Uh, to start with, uh, I would like to quote, uh, there was a small boy called Paul. He was a 12 year old boy and he wanted to pursue a, a career in law. So he writes a letter to the very famous judge, uh, Felix Frankfurter. And if you are a KSLU student, I'm sure you, done, you would have done this as part of your uh, English syllabi. Uh, so he's, he writes a letter asking the opinion of uh, Justice Felix Frankfurter as to what is required to become a good lawyer. And Felix Frankfurter in May 1956 writes back to this boy, Paul. He says, I quote, no one can be a truly competent lawyer unless he is a cultivated man. So what does he mean by this cultivated man is to expose yourself to the various aspects of law. He says, come as a well learned person and the remaining things the law will teach you automatically. So with regard to internships, uh, what is internship is the first question which most of you might have. Internship basically means handholding. It is uh, on the job training, which is given to students of law who want to pursue certain paths after completing their uh, five years or three years course respectively. So uh, why should I do internship is the next uh, obvious question, which we get from a lot of students as well. Uh, one, let me just give you a, a real time experience from my life. Uh, like Vikas sir already said, uh, during our times, we didn't have to do internship. So what we did was entire five years uh, of the course, we would study, we would uh, ensure that our academics are well in place. And my, on my first day at work, that is my first job, my first day when I went to work, obviously crisply dressed with a nice coat and a white and a white uh, uh, you know, clothing uh, with a lot of gleaming confidence of uh, having stood first in the uh, academic uh, curriculum in college and also having a hope to change things in the world of law. I stepped into my senior's office and uh, one of the first uh, assignments which was given to me was to draft an affidavit. And she said, uh, pick up a blue sheet and start drafting an affidavit. I was very confident about drafting an affidavit, but I looked around the office. I couldn't find a blue sheet. I looked for about five minutes across Then I come back to my senior and I told her, uh, ma'am, I don't think we have a blue sheet. She said, uh, no, I, we purchased it yesterday. So just go back and check. You might find it. So went back, checked for another two minutes and came back and said, I really can't find one, ma'am. Then she gets up and she goes around. She just picks up one full choir of paper and comes to me. She puts it before me and she says, here they are. And I was shocked because what she called a blue sheet, I told her, ma'am, this is green in color and not blue in color. So you can understand that I started from the scratch had I done an internship earlier, I would have probably understood what a green sheet looked like and a green sheet was called as a blue sheet. Nevertheless, uh, no regrets, absolutely no looking back after that particular day because each day had lots to teach us. We went through an entire process of grooming and there was absolutely no day that we regretted for having chosen law. Having said that, as we proceeded, we learned a lot of things. Uh, slowly, I moved on to the corporate. And then, uh, of course, I'm in teaching for the last seven years. So when I was given the opportunity to be helping students with the internship, I said, this is one thing which I should really tell them. And I should be an example to say, you know, do not waste your five years or your three years of three years course that you're doing. Pursue your internship in the right direction. And you will, you will surely see that there is a marked difference. So what this internship does is actually bridge between the theory and practice. Now, never would have a, a teacher in class told you the difference between a blue sheet and a green sheet or how much margin to leave when you're drafting an affidavit. So these, these small things you will learn only when you come into the profession, including how to stitch up a file. Probably that sounds pretty new to you, but once you start practicing, this is one of the norms that you would have to learn. The other aspect of why I should be doing internship is very simple. Again, there is a, a Bar Council of India rules with regard to legal education, which says that you have to pursue 
uh, internship, which is mandatory for you to have completed the course. So if you're pursuing a five years course, you should have done 20 weeks of internship in all the five years. And if you're pursuing a three years course, you need to complete 12 weeks of internship. And how they calculate it is four weeks per year. But though that is the mandatory standard, I would rather say do an internship whenever it permits you that is both in your summer break as well as in your winter break, because the learning is going to be tremendous. What you are going to learn and how you're going to bridge between theory and how you're going to put it into practice is a lot of thing to be learning during this internship period. So let's start with the first step. Right, I understood what is internship. Now let us understand how it is or what, what should I do in order to do a, a good internship. The first tool that you have is to write your resume. And I would say not write your resume, I would call it as build your resume. Because there is a step by step process into it. And the thumb rule is never copy paste your resume. Because we have received uh, uh, resumes, wherein including the name and the gender of the other person has been copied, and they have not bothered to change it at all. So that shows the seriousness with which the resume has been made. So keep your resume very crisp keep it short and keep it self-explanatory so that it simply conveys to the other person why you are approaching them and what is it that you're looking for. Now, a lot of them come back to us and ask us about the resume format, what format it should it be? Should I put my uh, educational qualification first? Should I put uh, the internships which I've pursued first? So I think uh, we, we quite go by the market standards. So whatever is the market standard at the time that you are making your resume, you can go by that. But what we would, uh, again, uh, you know, suggest is that to keep in mind the focus in terms of putting in only the true facts. This is why I said don't copy, because uh, let us say, for instance, you've copied it from somebody else and that person pursues or that person likes cricket and you don't like cricket or if that person does painting and you don't uh, do painting, and if there is a question posed to you on that, and if you don't know the answer, it cuts a very sorry figure. So that's why we say that as far as possible, uh, first of all, do not copy paste, put only the true facts which are uh, going to project whatever you are. The way you are, what you are is fine. Nobody is expecting you to know rocket science when you start uh, any internship at all. The other thing that you also have to be very careful about is, is with regard to uh, how you present yourself. Of course, Anish will be walking you, you through the soft skills and things like that. Uh, your honesty, your presentation skills, and your clarity in thought is what is going to really get you through. So once you have prepared your resume, and once you have identified where you want to apply, one thumb rule that you should remember is that you need to start looking for the profile of the company or the institution where you want to pursue your internship. Now, this is again a flaw which most of them do. They don't want to look up at what, what are all the various activities that particular institution is carrying on because of which when there are a couple of questions asked, you're not able to answer. Not only that, you're also not able to justify as to why you want to pursue. The, the one thing that the interview interviewer would be looking at is what is the drive that you have in you to pursue the internship or the placement that they have. So it is for you to prove that this is what I have and this exactly matches what you're looking for. And so no better candidate than me. So that is what you want to convey to the other person. With regard to um, where I should start, again, this is one uh, common question which we get. So what we say is, if you are pursuing your five years course, you have a luxury of time when you, when you compare yourself to your three years course counterpart. They have only three years uh, to decide what they want to do. But uh, the presumption is that when they have joined the three years course, since they've already completed the graduation, they are pretty clear as to where they want to take or what they want, how they want to shape their career. So this is again, uh, something that you need to keep in mind. When you are in your three years course, the presumption is that you already know a few aspects. Uh, again, like I said, they may not expect you to know all the laws by heart. 
nevertheless they expect you to have a uh, at least an acquaintance with the subjects that you have already done regarding the five years course uh, again uh, when when uh, students come and approach the uh, approach us we ideally tell them that they could pursue uh, you know uh, an internship with an ngo now why an ngo is because when you are pursuing an internship with an ngo you get hands on training you get to know the social fabric you also understand how things are in the real world now the national services authority has uh, prescribed that uh, every law, stu law student has to do one month of mandatory internship with the dlsa that is a district legal services authority and we have uh, sent quite a few of our students to pursue this it's a 22 day course and most of them have come back to us with very positive response and they say that they have learned a lot a lot of things that they had taken for granted because uh, as part of this they have to uh, visit the courts they have to visit old age homes they have to visit the destitute homes they have to visit uh, the uh, uh, places where the juveniles are kept uh, they also have to visit the, uh, all the tribunals so each day is a different visit on the whole so when they go and approach these places and when they see the uh, you know plight of people they actually get a real taste of life so a lot of them have come back and said this is a wonderful experience that we have had so if you don't uh, uh, know where to go i would rather say start with an ngo you can nevertheless start off uh, interning under a trial court advocate or a high court advocate or a supreme court advocate again uh, section 25 of the bar council rules gives you a list of places where you can intern under and uh, you can just pursue them with regard to your interest so when i say interest one of the primary things that you need to do is to first identify your interest why is it so important is because you do not want to regret the decision that you have taken over a period of time when you finish off with your internships and when you get into your placement you should be able to go back to work every day with a longing to learn something new and not with uh, you know a frown saying that oh my god i have to go back to work today if that feeling comes in then never go back to work you should always look forward to every day of going back to work so when you're identifying your interest, now, uh, ideally, again, when we talk to students, we, uh, we ask them one of the basic questions is, why did you take up law? Some of them come up with the answers like, you know, my father is an advocate or my mother is an advocate, my uncle inspired me. There are some who say that, you know, I watched this movie, I watched that movie, so I got inspired. There are some who read books and get inspired. So when you read a book or when you watch a movie, the kind of liking that you think you have is not the actual liking once you pursue that particular subject. For instance, uh, a lot of them feel that, uh, you know, they have a palate for a criminal law, particularly when they watch uh, movies, uh, uh, you know, and, and there is uh, uh, a lot of argument and the cross-examination which happens in the court hall. They think that, uh, you know, uh, criminal law is something which is very easy to pursue. But probably when they start off in that particular career, they may realize that it is not their cup of tea. Maybe they have a corporate bent of mind. So a lot of them, when they come and speak to us during admissions and when they come and ask us about the uh, career options, most of the students and parents now seem to have uh, corporate as the fab word. So they say, I want my child to pursue a career in corporate. So when you try to dwell a little further and find out, so what is it in the corporate? Uh, are you interested in uh, intellectual property rights? Is it mergers and acquisitions? They are clueless. Nevertheless, there are a few who do a very well-grounded work and they're very clear about what they want to do. So then it becomes easier for us to facilitate as well. Nevertheless, the people who are not aware of what it is, we tell them to look for options. So ideally what we say is that for the first two years, if you are doing a five years course, like I said, you have the luxury of time. So you should be able to try various options and see what suits you. So if I'm talking about two years, you already have four semesters. So each of the semester break, you try four different aspects, like maybe an NGO, a trial court advocate, and also, you know, uh, probably, uh, uh, you know, a corporate if you're able to get into. So try various things, and then you will be able to analyze what exactly suits you. 
Uh, nevertheless, what we also tell students is uh, try and wait to get into the corporate uh, internships uh, till at least the third year of your five years course. Because by that time, you would have finished the basic subjects like contract act, company law, corporate governance. So all those subjects you would have already studied. So it's easier for you to go ahead and understand the process. While you're doing this internship, doesn't matter what kind of internship you are doing, uh, it is a mandatory requirement. And we also recommend that you maintain a diary. Because what happens is your internship is assessed in your final year, in your 10th semester. And you would have started interning right from your first year. So by the time you come to your final year, there is very little chance that you will remember what you did in your first in or your second internship. So you should maintain a diary, start making a note of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Initially, everything may not make sense to you. You may not understand half the things. Nevertheless, approach the people who are giving you the internship. They will be more than happy to help you. Alternatively, you can come back to your institution, talk to your teachers. This is again one thing which we really encourage because uh, uh, roughly at, after you finish your first two years, when you reach your third year, you're supposed to have a very good uh, idea about where you're heading towards. So now you're steering your career in a particular direction and in a direction which you think you are going to like for a longer period in time. So once you start uh, steering your career, you will be uh, having a lot of clarity. But it does happen so that some of the students, even after these uh, two years or these four internships, they're not very, very clear. And when they come and speak to us, uh, we find out, you know, we find out and we talk to them and counsel them. So this is where the role of the teacher also comes in. A lot of students are hesitant. I would request you and suggest you to please go talk to your professors. They will be more than happy to tell you how to go about it. If not, uh, uh, you know, a career guidance per se, they will at least tell you what to do and what not to do, which will bring a lot of clarity into you. They can tell you what is the uh, subject that you might be interested in because they, they are seeing you on a day-to-day -day basis. They will be able to assess what your likes and dislikes are, and they will be able to suggest, suggest something to you. So if in doubt, please ask. Go talk to your teachers, have a one-on-one -on -one with them and find out Tell them that this is the problem that I'm having and they will surely help you with it. So once you are uh, in your third year, you have identified what you exactly want to do, then go ahead and pursue internship in that particular direction. So by the time you come to your eighth semester, that is uh, in, in if you're in a three years course, by the time you come to finish your fourth semester and come to your fifth semester, you should be able to get your internship, which should work as a pre-placement. So what I mean by pre-placement is this internship should be the pathway which opens up to your placement. So by the time you come to the final year, you should be able to crack it and you should be able to land yourself in a job. Nevertheless, uh, the internship and placement cell may also conduct uh, uh, you know, uh, job fairs in the institution. They may call in a lot of other in, uh, organizations to take part. Do not uh, leave any stone unturned. Attend as many interviews as possible. Each the interview is a learning curve for you. You will know what to do and what not to do in the subsequent interview. So never leave any stone unturned. Take everything as an opportunity. Not everyone is going to be sweet to you. There may be people who are just going to bombard you with a lot of questions. And that becomes a self-reflection and you will then start learning, okay, this is where I stand and this is where I need to go up. So do this as often as possible so that you're able to see yourself in a better manner. Right, so what I've told you right now is, is like a fairy tale, a rosy situation, and they all lived happily ever after, after getting a job. Okay, what if I was not able to get the internship that I wanted? So what, are, what do I do then? Are there any alternatives? Positively, there are alternatives. So what else can I do? There are multiple seminars, there are multiple conferences, there are multiple workshops which are being held. Uh, let us say, for instance, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a slightly different person from the lot. So uh, my interests are uh, maybe uh, forensics or artificial intelligence, and uh, I don't get internships very easily. So what do I do? So you always have these seminars and conferences which you can be a part of. 
And if it permits you to publish a paper, I would say take the leap, go start researching, write a paper. Don't judge your paper. Let the conveners judge your paper. If they find it good enough to publish it, let them publish it. Otherwise, you can at least present it. Now, there are two things which comes out of this. One is that you know about the subject a little better because you have done enough research. Second thing is by attending these conferences, seminars and workshops, you also get to know other people or like minded people who would also share their information with you. So it's a very good platform to know people. So what we also do as an, uh, you know, as an institutional uh, 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 you know, work is that we try and find out from our students what are these areas that they would be interested in. Very recently, uh, last week, we completed one of the uh, certification courses on entrepreneurship development, venture capital and business laws. That is again, something which is very rare, where, which you don't have in most institutions. Similarly, we conducted workshops on forensics, mining laws, uh, air and space law. So there are these niche areas which can be tapped. Uh, similarly, we also called in people to speak about uh, uh, career opportunities in the armed forces, like the JAG, Judge and Advocate General's Office. So they come and they're also very happy to share information because they also want a lot of people to know about the entire process. You must have watched uh, movies where you have the court martial proceedings and you would want to know how that works. So once you uh, qualify into the JAG, you will be part of the court martial proceedings and you will be the person who is going to give them the legal guidance. So there are multiple things that you can do. So if you have still not woken up to the fact that internship is very, very important, I would say, knock yourself, get up, start looking for some internship. Okay, the next question is, uh, it's a COVID situation. We are not supposed to go out. So how am, I, how am I supposed to do internship? Simple, just looking at that system right now. You have a mobile at hand or you have a laptop. There are multiple opportunities on the internet. And uh, unlike, unlike in the offline world, when you are in the online world, you have multiple opportunities to pursue your internship in anything that you want. So you can't say, I didn't get the internship that I wanted. Uh, there are also certain uh, uh, top tier firms which require you to qualify a test and they may put you through a couple of rounds of uh, interview before they give you an internship. Each venture that you're going to take is going to be fruitful. Okay, So every step that you're going to take forward with regard to your internship is of course going to shape your placement. A lot of them, uh, uh, you know, uh, earlier, let, let us say about five to six years back, uh, even in their fourth year or, or towards the completion of their course were not very clear as to how to go, go ahead. Uh, again, those who had a, a legacy of, of, you know, having an office already set up for them, they were pretty clear. But the ones who were first time uh, law graduates, they didn't know how to pursue it. And when we try to help them and, and we, when we put them through this channel saying that these are all the possible options and maybe you want to try one of them, most of them got benefited. And because of this, so if you choose the right kind of internship, you will be able to also choose the right kind of placements, obviously, then life gets really settled. So I now uh, request my uh, colleague Anish to tell you about the placement prospects. And if you do have questions, please uh, feel free to ask any of us. So over to you, Anish. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so before I start, uh, I just quick uh, confirmation. I hope I'm audible. Great. And sir, Vikas, sir, thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. And uh, ma'am, as, as usual, once again, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the gesture as well. All right. So now we have understood the, the core components. Uh, to introduce, because if you remember at, at the during our times, there was a opener by the name of Arun Lal. He used to open. So we thought that she should open it. <laughs> yeah. Great, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our students have done remarkably well. They have been recruited by reputed companies despite COVID-19 disruptions. Uh, that's a wonderful statement to have. And more often than not, the placement officers and the sales focus towards 
achieving this particular statement and this is not just a statement it has a it has a lot of groundwork as rightly pointed out by aruna ma'am and a lot of reality there as well so if i have to say is this particular statement possible to achieve during these difficult times because i suggested that this is one of the most remarkable statement to say it is very much possible like we say in economics the concept of demand and supply if there is a shortage of supply in terms of generating employment from the conventional sectors and conventional units or industries you have startups who are filling in those gaps yes the entire the horizon is completely different they absolutely come with different needs they have their own set of requirements but nevertheless when we talk about supply there is so when we say that we need to achieve this wonderful statement that we have done remarkably well and the students all the students have been recruited by you know reputed companies despite what we are facing today that is the covid 19 disruptions then we are talking about three relevant dimensions to placements three most specific dimensions to placements one is of course our academic curriculum we are faced with it every day next as ma'am took us through the the relevance of internship that becomes an absolutely most important dimension and of course uh, subsequently which becomes the prerequisite requirement for placement and that is your soft skills now let us see whether these are inversely related again i am bringing in the concept of economics it plays a very important role because the moment you take talk about companies it's all about economics in fact uh, i i also tell the same to my students what is competition law well it is nothing but the process of an economic rivalry there is absolutely no question of talking about competition law if you are not addressing economic principles the relevance of a competition law is strictly on the basis of economic principles and the market rivalry which we are talking about likewise when we say the relevance of internship it absolutely plays a very important role but what is most important is also with regard to soft skills so am i to say that soft skills and internship are inversely related to a larger extent yes to a larger extent yes so am i to further say that internships and the academic curriculum are inversely related well that is a little bit of you know uh, taking there why because all of us know that theory holds good to a fairly larger extent but practice is absolutely different what you see on a work front is slightly a different you know dynamics the entire dimension with regard to implementing or executing what we learn from theory undergoes a subtle change a fine change we are not talking about anything which is ultra wires the academic curriculum absolutely no there is absolutely nothing called outside the scope of academic curriculum but having said that that does not restrict you from innovating but if i am to talk about an interrelationship whether academics as well as internship are inversely related yes to a fairly a larger extent but after which you certainly take deviation so certainly they never go hand in gloves why because practice may have a very dynamic approach unlike theory unlike theory so when we talk about placements two most important placements one is of course your lateral placements and the other is the cohort placements now when you say cohort placements well again it is it is it is more of a model where entities are compartmentalized based on a functions which they are willing to offer to the students so the recruiters generally come to the campus or offer uh, the job prospects to the prospective students only on a particular profile or on a particular domain or on a particular position so you group them together there's absolutely no difference among what they are offering so you group them together so it's it's like a cohort placement but when you talk about lateral placement that also plays very important role because considering the fact we all we have three or llb students as well as the llm students now what is it with these three or llb uh, students as well as the llm students it is presumed first of all this is the second ug program and most of them might have taken a break in the middle to per, to pursue their career in 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 a, in a particular industry so they definitely come with certain work experience 
Now, why this kind of placement becomes very important is because it will address the increasing needs of corporates. And for students, with or without prior experiences, obviously you're talking about the relevance of internships. Because internships there, it will gear them up. It will prepare them with regard to what is expected on the job front. Absolutely important because the moment I said that there's an inverse relationship between soft skills and internships, it is largely to do with the contribution which the internships you know, do to attain these particular soft skills. But then when we talk about students who already have some kind of an experience before they embark upon you know, further education, there are companies who are part of such recruitment programs. And they, they more often always look forward for students who's, who extends, who come exclusively with this kind of backgrounds, who have a selective you know, a work backgrounds, work experience. And they are specialized in a sense that they have a very intensive selection process. These entities will have a very intensive selection process, which is obviously as per their convenience. Like say, for example, a candidate with about, uh, with about 22 months of experience is what they want, or 12 months of experience is what they want. And what happens is it becomes quite easier to you know, uh, bring out the eligible candidates for such lateral recruitment processes. And as I pointed out some time back, in law discipline, it definitely best suits because you're talking about three-year LLB program and the LLM programs. But when you talk about the integrated course, that is our UG students, internship lays a very solid foundation to learn the dynamics of the work and the work-related pattern meters, which eventually lead them or could lead them to a desired placement. Now, as a matter of, once again, a model, keeping students in mind. There is also a policy called as dream and wait and hold. This is some of the policies which are exclusively used by select few institutions, dream and wait and hold. Now, this is a very wonderful position to be in. I pointed out this is a very beneficial to students and this happens when supply is more and demand is fairly less, meaning to say, the number of candidates an institute has got to offer in relation to the recruiters who want to come in, there's a mismatch, mismatch which is favoring us. But this may not be common practice. So how does it mismatch and how does it be, how is it beneficial? Well, if a, if a particular student is selected for a particular job, is allowed to hold on to it and apply for another one in the same sector or in the same industry, and whichever deems to be more beneficial to the student, he or she can take that. It's popularly called as dream and wait and hold approach. But then again, for this to happen, generally there is, should be a, a positive or a beneficial uh, impact as far as the behavior of the demand and supply is concerned. Which now takes us to one essential prerequisites of placement as to what are these soft skills? Now, be it your pre-COVID times, now it's mad, becoming a matter of past pre-COVID times and the presence says it all. And with regard to the post-COVID phase, as and when it happens, employability still is one of the most essential aspects the student has to work upon. And that is where soft skill becomes very important because academic curriculum is taken care of to a fairly larger extent. Internships are being taken care of to a fairly larger extent. What is to do? How do we fine tune the subsequent outcome of these two element dimensions, that is academic curriculum and internship. Now, few reasons why interviewer rejects a candidates are, let's say, one of the one of the few reasons they generally put forward is, you know, they have come across students with no motivation. They're absolutely not motivated. And I'm pretty sure Aruna ma'am knows from where I'm coming from when I say this. They do it. Oh, I got a mail to my inbox, so there we go. Let's, let's proceed with this. Unfortunate, but no motivation. Another most important thing is his or her opinion was not right. When we say opinion, it is to do with you know, subject specific. Now, again, when we talk about subject specific, we are not talking about academic uh, curriculum. Specific or contextual reference. It depends upon you know, various things, but when, when we are in a particular interview, there is a specific uh, uh, reasoning 
attached to it and when we say that our opinion was not right it is specifically to that particular subject matter we don't have a positive mindset and most commonly found either in your internships or in your placement is the presentation and communication skills were not up to the mark were not up to the mark none of i don't think any of the recruiters even today are expecting us to be presenting a flawless uh, you know uh, interview or uh, able to produce one of the best you know interview skills there i think most often than not it's all about the skills and the way we put forward things in the right perspective so it is very important to note and appreciate that entities recruit not just because of your domain skills you might be absolutely wonderful in what you're doing but remember your opinion on a subject matter also matters the most to them and if your opinion is not up to the mark it could be a one of the factors that goes into consideration for you know for the, the to happen or not to happen but then when we talk about today's covid times it is also important that we focus upon something called as transferable skills it's highly important today we are living in a time wherein we have to absolutely focus upon certain transferable skills and what are these transferable skills there are five of them and it's quite simple and remember these all aspects generally comes from the exposure to internships first is asking questions to oneself that is yourself more like an introspection but when you answer to yourself be sure of your answer it has to be absolutely correct and it starts from you next is your sol- problem solving ability what am i talking about i am talking about the transferable skills which has become the need of the art during this covid times which is going to be the thing as we go forward post the covid phase and these skills are now becoming at least on a surface level to begin with absolutely important second is your problem solving ability third very important and this to a larger extent amongst many things internship helps us is pressure of deadline and managing to work efficiently most of us have this tendency to fizzle out most of this have the tendency to fizzle out and it's absolutely important that we work in the this pressure of deadline and at the same time the casualty should not be our work that must be efficiently taken care of as well fourth when i'm talking about transferable skill is your teamwork gone are the days even now when we have this uh, a virtual or an online internship it's still a team it's still a teamwork although it's called as online internship where we do it at the at the, the comfort of a home it's no more that comfortable it's not absolutely that comfortable we are most certainly coordinating our activities with the team members so teamwork is another most important skills to have in other words called as a transferable skills and whatever name we want to call it as as far as the presentation and communication skills which becomes the fifth essential component also becomes a very important factor to consider as far as our soft skills and the subsequent placements is concerned now because of this present covid uh, challenges companies or firms are themselves going through a lot of challenges and this is something we have to be aware of it's not that we ourselves on an individual space are going through a lot of challenges even the entities are going through a lot of challenges startups are actually going through a lot of challenges established units are going through a lot of challenges so therefore it is quite important whether we uh, agree to it or not to have a very empathetic approach about this aspect and this can only happen when there is a matter of self awareness which is again part of your relevant skills to have especially during this covid times because if you look at the recruiters today they are working in a very unpredictable environment and remember because of this unpredictable environments one glimmer of hope for us is is there is a chance for our creativity and innovation because they are trying new things as far as recruiters are concerned they are absolutely trying new things and creativity and innovation are the core elements of it so when students must be open to try out new things because as far as mistakes are there it is bound to happen but remember those mistake must always lead to corrections because eventually what matters is that company benefits or you contribute to the growth of the entity now i have used the term creativity and innovation remember it has a varied meaning it could have a varied dimension but keeping all things constant keeping all the variable constants which again it's popularly called as ceteris paribus 
in the world of economics creativity and innovation by students should save time efforts and money for the company and also eventually should increase the productivity of the entity but that is not the only thing once again which is not limited to that aspect alone but can also extend to aspects like your new thought process or your innovative solution for process execution now look at the dimensions we are in now had this been about 4 or 5 years back maybe they were impliedly there and it was impliedly expected of us but now because of the considering the scenario which we are putting at least in the last one year and it's now it's and the fact that it is now going to be for a fairly long time to come the entire dimensions of the market is undergoing change and the dimension can also be seen not just in placement but also can be seen in the internships because i remember talking to you about online internship just about 4 to 5 minutes back and it's become a way of life for the students and what exactly are we trying to achieve in this online internship is is to develop something called as research attributes and for law students as far as research is concerned it's absolutely not new and now you see it is now extrapolating into the the area of internship but please remember that these research attributes as mom as ma'am pointed out uh, with regard to doing a fair bit of homework about your prospective employers it must be effectively used when it comes to placements as well so you got to use these research attributes very effectively when it comes to placements so therefore instead of researching about a company just before receiving an interview or offer you know coming into your inbox from a prospective employer it is always to prepare or it is always better to prepare a list of uh, prospective employers and hrs where one intends to apply and start researching about them it is absolutely important you must be knowing that there are some generic questions which are been asked we generally get you know even today it continues to be so in the interviews most most occasion they not the first question is tell me about yourself where we are all ready to tell about ourselves but the problem is are we telling what they want to hear most often they not they probably want to hear something about us with regard to how we have you know a problem solving exercise had had we put into such kind of a scenario in the past if we are then how did we actually deal with the scenario but nevertheless this is a very first question or second or third whichever in the order in which it has to come based on the interest of the recruiter this question will be posed but it is very important that we also have a very smarter approach on this it is important that we understand the relevant company's growth it is important that we do a research on the industrial trends and just in case if you know the a uh, person who is going to interview then it is also important that you uh, do a fair bit of research about the person through linkedin if possible because value proposition we bring to the company must be our motto ultimately and to end these days we are also faced with video interviews and remember i believe most of us are aware of this there are softwares which tracks your body language when the video interview is conducted so it's better off to have a very positive body language look at it they have a software to track your body language it matters to them the most and considering the challenges they post with that is your video interview technology is helping them so positive body language is must and finally when it comes to salary expectation this is the most important thing it is always better not to share a specific number better to share a range or evaluate what company competitively offers because ultimately after doing everything if we cut a sorry figure on this front i don't think we will be happy about it after doing such a good, wonderful homework all the way and somehow we slipped on this particular segment so it's always better not to quote a particular figure share a range or let's say evaluate what company competitively offers because our research must lead us to an understanding as to what company usually pays for this particular title position or this job level and that becomes absolutely important when we talk about the soft skills as a prerequisite requirement for the placements thank you very much all your sir At the testing times, even the staff today is not there because of the lockdown. So I will even ask Aruna Ma'am to unlock.
and that's what you were saying that one has to do the all skills together and as they say that once you have to lead from the front you should know everything you can't expect that sometimes during this course of time once you grow in your life sometimes you have become so much dependent upon certain things that i have seen some people they get so much assimilated with their staff that they do not even know where the button is to switch on the this thing i remember i had gone to a uh, is officers during a meeting a friend of mine so he was asking where the staff was and there he said because i want to print out but where do we uh, have the button to switch on the printer on the printer itself so it's important that we should continue to this thing meanwhile you also keep yourself on your feet and the uh, most fascinating part is that we started with since so the platform is of 100 we started with 100 and we are still on 100 so it only shows that uh, all the people have actually taken up the entire the thing we were always pausing about two aspects while we were speaking since the questions are not poured in i will just like to ask because a lot of people actually want to understand also now what soft skills according to you are as such required which one is that which is naturally born and one is which can be i am asking a open question to both of you which can be improved with the flux of time and how to improve that like let's assume a writing skill how do you improve that ma'am you may want to address that uh one uh, initial thing is that uh, a lot of them can speak but when it comes to writing we say okay start writing what you think they all get stuck with the initial introduction itself so uh, they have to start writing and like i said you know uh, writing an abstract or writing a research paper towards that is a good direction uh, one of the other things uh, again which will help them in their interviews also and what anish was pointing to is the questions that uh, are often asked uh, tell me about yourself so they they don't quite understand uh, the you know the swot analysis they need to understand their strengths their weaknesses how they have dealt with the opportunities and what are the troubles that they have faced during these times so if they are able to write it down and go through it it's a good thing again uh, uh, because i'm sure you will agree a uh, lot of them have stopped writing for all practical purposes everybody uses uh, you know uh, the the computer or their uh, mobile phones including taking notes but i believe that once you start writing you also start writing in your mind so once you've written it in your mind doesn't matter at any point in time it automatically comes to you uh, what we also do from the institutional perspective is that uh, we give them training on soft skills and we call it as life skills so we start on uh, uh, we again focus this as part of english as well where they are uh, asked to go through prece Uh, comp- comprehension writing it may sound very uh, kiddish when they start join the course per se but once they understand the uh, repercussion most of them are willing to do it from the placement perspective i think again anish will be able to add on yes and also to add on to that uh, when we talk about certain skills to be developed so we have some certain skills as finance now predominantly what law students have is oh finance is not it's not related to me it's not relevant to me classic uh, example which i have come across is the law of taxation taxation for some reason or the other is considered to be a commerce subject and not a law subject it's got nothing to do with law but nevertheless either way whichever way we look at it there are certain courses called finance for non finance executives now those non finance executives could be like us very much like us from the law discipline now why is it very important to develop on such uh, skills is it is also very important as a law graduate to also understand certain behavior of a corporate an entity for example a startup might be interested in break even point now what is this break even point how is this break even sales attained what is this margin of safety now of course there is a theory there is a formula attached to it we arrive at the figure but as a compliance as a matter of due diligence we also have to got to see whether it was adopted in the right way and there was no fudging of numbers 
for which we got to be slightly self reliant as to when a particular cost accountant or a finance manager comes and says i have arrived at this figure mos margin of safety is this break even sales is this not only are in a position to understand what that person is speaking we can also do a cross verification to see whether the numbers are right or not to not that we have a trust deficit on the person in the event of some issues happening we will also be in a position to handle the issue because we are also aware as to what is this what exactly is the proposition which is placed which is probably hampering the entity so these little skills which may not be a core element could be picked up as we go forward short that is strength to weakness opportunities and threats now as a student if we have to actually enumerate one first within himself and then secondly how to put it across so what do you feel in a resume writing uh, how one has to express these thoughts or uh, let's assume for an interview how do one highlight his strength then his weaknesses then opportunities of growth and threat perception as such that whether this company will grow or what is the growth chart as such okay uh, this is where the research also comes in so like we said uh, you have to research about the institution where you are going to apply so once you understand how they function and what is it that they do you can project your strengths and weaknesses uh, according to that so what uh, i uh, again tell students is have a master copy of your resume when you are applying to a particular organization alter it according to their needs now say for instance if i am a i am a firm who is looking for people with the ipr knowledge i am not quite bothered about what other things that you have done but i might be looking at your hobbies and interests so you need to assess what are all the parameters that the organization will be looking at which is very obvious when you do a little bit of research on what they have so uh, when when i say resume we are actually trying to match what the recruiter is looking at and what we have to offer so this matching should be as close as possible and which is possible when you are able to uh, project your strengths so you will project your strengths and there is there is no uh, harm in uh, you know uh, uh, putting your weaknesses in front of them you can tell them see i don't know this but what what uh, contributes towards is your willingness to learn so along with your weaknesses if you are able to show that i am willing to learn i am willing to change myself to the degree that you're looking at that itself becomes a very positive thing so your weakness can be turned into a strength uh the threat can also be turned into an opportunity it all depends on how open minded you are how positive you are towards the uh, opportunity and how you are able to project saying that i really need this particular position uh, mr anish i would like to also ask like lot of things uh, so we will have a separate session and sector on these aspects like to remember the facts sometimes we are able to we know the facts but to how to assimilate and put it across that is also one of the keys not only for the interview but even for the exams i am taking this thing forward because being a chartered accountant and like i saw that both of you are the toppers so as i say what is the that successful mantra that a golden mantra to put the thing straight in the mind and put it across so that the person who is reading not as a student for a student as a to, to teacher but as a professional while you were are expressing as i say that it's all the expression and like what ma'am said that you in a resume you can tweak in a lighter way there was a common joke i do not know uh, how many would have heard it like a person read was asked to read an essay upon his father uh, on a game of football so they say that you should always remember that the foot the match will come so they said that you have gone to uh, instead in the entire show it came in the paper it came write about a mela so but he had all prepared it for the uh, football match so he says that i went to a uh, mela but i saw that in the right side there was a football match going on and he writes on the football then in similarly he, he, he was uh, he was asked right upon the ra railway journey so he says that i was going on the railway train suddenly the uh, train broke down i got down and i saw that there is a football match so sometimes you have to tweak the facts according to the situation and that is called the street smartness within the profession and society at large so what is your golden mantra say where the person could actually remember and learn things in the right perspective first i will yes, ask sir. from mr anish and then we will take to arun yes sir thank you
now awareness of the fact is the most essential factor reproduction need not be because we might lose the uh, pathway or the steam if we are under the uh, pressure of reproducing the same thing it's quite not possible now for for anybody including the law students or the uh, there could uh, there could be practicing chartered accountants who are actually dealing with uh, certain aud- auditing aspects or certain tax matters now when we apply certain provisions we are not applying verbatim in fact we are not able to recollect them and then executing it so what matters to us is when a particular scenario comes in front of us comes before us the awareness of the fact comes in handy and the moment an, a scenario comes and we are able to relate to the fact then we can make sure that they are clubbed together in order to arrive at a, a fairly or a reasonable or a logical end may not be a conclusive end but an end to start off from there on subsequently so the moment we are uh, trained or equipped to reproduce facts we are in trouble it again goes back to those uh, times where in uh, in order to score marks exactly the way some individuals do have a photogenic memory and in fact i keep talking about this to aruna ma'am as well excellent uh, writing skills in fact it will be exactly just like a textbook yeah i i know we can always raise a suspicion really so something went wrong no 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 not necessarily even when they present when they do the oral presentation they have this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this ability to exactly put forward the words which is absolutely available in the textbook but that is one part of the story if as they say as every rule has an exception that is an exception but as sir put forward as rightly put forward as so how are we going to go about with facts and how are we going to use these facts use these facts as a you know as a as a dots and take the scenarios and start connecting those dots and to that extent larger extent facts will make making a lot of sense so reproduction should not be a goal uh, as uh, awareness of the facts as the most important element because it helps a lot as far as the a scenario based approach is concerned because ultimately at the end of the day either five years course or three years course in fact it must have been the case in internship in the internships what happens is when we are pushed with research and when the the employer asks us to find out uh, rbi guidelines on a particular foreign exchange transaction and check whether a non resident and resident has to be looked into the first point is we have to be in a position to go beyond the factual understanding of a resident and a non resident because the moment you say resident and non resident you will talk about income tax act hold on maybe foreign exchange management act has got something to say as well because you're talking about foreign exchange transactions so like that the moment we have a complete understanding of the facts it's quite easy to comprehend on the scenario which we faced with which will eventually take us to a desired uh, end or a goal ma'am uh, uh, i think uh, uh, education has transcended this requirement of memorizing uh, i remember when i was in school i could hardly even remember the poetry which we were supposed to the poems uh, i wouldn't remember at all but uh, we have now gone to a situation where where we are looking at it from a more analytical perspective so rather than looking at memorizing if you understand the concepts and if you are able to put it forward be it in your examination or be it in your uh, uh, interview i think that is what they will be looking at again uh, there is no right or wrong answer they are not expecting you to give a precise answer like anish had already said with regard to the uh, placements nevertheless what they would be uh, gauging you on is how well you are able to connect the dots and how well you are able to analyze it and as teachers also I, we have transcended uh, to you know just just sticking to the, the same old cases uh, nevertheless uh, uh, you know we have we've had cases where uh, they say keshavananda bharti versus maneka gandhi you know we have had uh, uh, cases like that in the answer script where where we are wondering you know what is this case all about so uh, for certain subjects of course uh, quoting the right cases and the names becomes uh, important but for most of the uh because the question pattern has also changed so nobody now expects you to memorize for the simple reason that you have google so if i need something you can just google it and find out so i don't have to actually keep it in your mind but rather the analytics so your fundamentals have to be strong once you lay your foundation very strong you are able to understand the subject i think any question on that will be easily uh, accommodated uh, we don't have any question as such and it was a quite a fascinating session before we part for the day we would request everyone to like subscribe and share the beyond law clc channel uh, 
uh, and also to comment upon so that we can take further sessions on what topic they actually want. And on a lighter way, in what you said that you have to learn to connect the dots, and it is how you do it. There's a common joke that a friend asked that uh, normally a uh, nowadays topic comes right about your father, and you can just speak about the things. So suddenly the essay comes to write about the friends. So he says Ram was. Uh, I've got many uh, many uh, when the essay comes about the father instead of friends. He says I have got many friends, but Ram is my best father, and he has the best abilities to uh, move forward in life, and he has also promoted me like anything. So you just ha don't have to cut, copy, and paste, but you also have to apply the minds in the right perspectives, and that's what we have learned from Mr. Anish and Aruna. I can say that there were two A's and the third is the A's of the knowledge. So it became the triple A's of the knowledge sharing. So it was a wonderful session and we believe that we will continue to connect together and the dots would actually become lines and lines will become the sentences and sentences will become paraphrases and so on and on it will become a story to be remembered for all times to come. Thank you everyone. Stay safe, stay blessed and contribute for the better contribution of the society at large. We are going through the testing times. Time and again we say keep on wearing the wearing the mask, protect yourself, maintain social distancing, and in whatever little manner, physically as well as monetarily or in a, uh, your bodily strengths, you can contribute for the betterment of the nation. Do contribute in one way or the other. Thank you.